this is Ling Chi. Um, I taught fine line lesson for several years now, and then I had a, a lot of requests to do a video. And this is the first time I'm doing um, video explain about fine line, uh, which also in Chinese called gong bi. Um, the the this particular technique it's very laboring, time consuming. So I will just explain the um, initial, and then uh, you can order the written lesson from us. Um, the difference, the fine line lesson. Let's talk about the paper. The paper is the Chinese Xuan paper, but it's sized so that you um, paint on it, and then when you turn it over on the other side, it doesn't go through. And uh, you, uh, you achieve the value by layering it, by applying the color, and then fade. So I will demonstrate those techniques in this short video so you can understand the essence of uh, fine line. Um, the brushes that usually we use a line brush called red feather, which is very, um, has very good tip. That will give you um, uh, a control of the line. And then the next set of brushes will be the soft brush, which it depends on the area you wash. So when you're talking about soft hair brush, mostly are um, white hair, goat hair. But then there is a lot of not so good uh, soft hair brush out there without the tip. So you, you want to make sure that you're getting the right one that has a good shape. So when I uh, wash it and wet it, you can see that my my brushes has an even haircut. Good brush, whether it was white hair or, or um, hard hair, and then you want it to um, even it up to give you a straight haircut. So that assure you, you're going to have a good tip. So a lot of times when people bring us brushes to look at or to test, the minute if I flatten it out and then it has really like indent in the middle, then those brushes are not going to give you the tip. So uh, this is the way to test it. You wet it and then you flatten it out to see. I don't have a bad one, so I can't show you, but then I can split this. So if you're your brush coming into this way, then that means the the brush is not good at all. And in this lesson, because it has um small areas, so I would use one of our um small double happiness, which has a combination, has some white hair and then also dark hair in the middle for the small area. And then I also use our new twig brush to wash in the to wash in the um, small area. The reason you don't want to use any hard hair brushes because um, this particular lesson that we don't have a lot of layers, but a lot of times the fine line lesson, uh, fine, less, uh, fine line painting, sometimes people apply seven or eight layers. And then each time you have to wash it. When you use a hard hair brush, sometimes make the paper tear or, um, or getting a hole. So it, it, you wanted to use the soft hair brush so the it's not so harsh on the hair. And, um, um, when we're talking about layers, and I will also mention it later on, each layer will not 
after the first layer, you have to wait completely dry before you um, apply the um, second layer. So um, today the lesson is Narcissist. So I have um, a very simple drawing for the beginner buying lesson. This is the drawing. And I'm going to show you some line work. So if you never done fine line before, then this is something you need to really practice. Because if you don't have good line work, then your painting is not worthwhile doing. So I'm using a medium ink and then to show you the line work like this I will start with the small area. This is my flower. And then the flower, the line usually are more delicate should you show the value of the flower being soft. And then um, the leaves. So again, that is bigger, harder. So my line work is much more thicker to show this particular subject. And then I have a calyx. So this is what I would like you to practice line work. You start what we call nail head and mouse tail. So you should be able to do a straight line vertically as well as horizontally or turning okay so majority the fine line work will start with the line first and after we finish the line we'll fill in the um the color and we already show you the comp the completely composition of the uh, narcissist before this. So then I will show you the, the different steps of this particular subject. So I prepare this first layer, which I did the dark leaves with the ink wash. And then I did the soft green with the calyx and the stain. This is it. And then I did the ink wash on the bulbs and the, Evan helped me the heaves to support the, the flower. And uh, sheaves. So these are all ink washes. And then after my second layer, I wash the indigo over the dark leaves. And then I wash the Brinciana, add the ink into the 
um, the shade of ink on the sheaves and the bulbs. Then the last layer, I add the dark green into the leaves and then a little bit yellowish ochre around the sheaves as well as the bulbs. So then uh, I'm going to show you the process when I'm talking about wash, what it means. So on the leaves, the first wash, I'm going to do the, um, the ink wash. So I have two brushes. When you can see, the hair is being used a little bit. And that's where I'm going to use the ink. And then I have also a clean brush, which I will use to fade and wash. So I do the light ink. And then I use the clean brush to fade. So the moisture control is like you do Xiaoyi style. They are very important too. You can't be too wet, you can be too dark. So then I fade away. So there's one of the very important things that the beginner usually make mistakes. I will show it to you. So like I apply the ink, but I only fade on the edge of where I apply. The thing you don't want to do, say you apply the ink, and then you start making your face, you start using washing, you start going above the finishing line. So you go do this. So that's what happened is that one thing is going to make your work very messy. And then also you're pulling all the dark value away. So that's what you don't want to do. So again, this is very important essence. So when you apply the color, you only fade away at the edge. You do not go into beyond the edge. And then each time you wash, you want to have a paper towel to make sure that your wash brush is clean. So each wash, you apply this over. Okay, so this is the first layer for the leaves. Then we're talking about the center of the flower. This center of flower is very small area. So I mean using the small debit double happiness and I have a burn sienna and I do some right above the line, leave a little bit space to apply the burn sienna. And I have a twig brush, it kind of faded a little bit. And then on the, the the back side of the center of flower, I use burnt sienna. Then I fade away. So 
Okay, that's the center of flower. In the later on, we'll fill the middle with the with the burnt sienna. Oh, I'm sorry, vermilion. And then now we're applying to the using the petal, which we will again by using the small double happiness, which is, or if you have some small white hair brushes, you can use as a good tip. So I start at the middle. The tip and then going down. Then I use the twig brush to fade. So that's the flower petal. The calyx as well as the, the stain to hold the calyx, which I will use this interesting green, which is indigo, I add yellow, and I add stone green to make this soft um, green. You will see like a, a lot of soft part of the, the flower. So then again, I started from the top and the bottom. And I use the twig brush, which has a really soft and good tip. And I wash. So that's how I show the dimension. The same technique on the stain to hold the as well as the back leaf. Back side of leaf, I'm doing the same thing. So after you do all this, you want to wait until it dry before you apply the second layer, which I have something on the side. I'll bring it out to show you how I do it the second time. This is my, I'm using, I'm getting ready for the second layer. I did the ink wash on the sheath as well as the bulbs. And I did the ink wash on the leaves, the front of the leaves. So, I'm going to use indigo for the dark leaves. So I clean the brush with the ink and now I'm applying the indigo where the ink was and just a little bit beyond. Now you're pulling the color. I'm pulling the you're color. Fading it. Fading. With a clean brush. With a clean brush. And then I dab the clean brush on the paper towel so it doesn't go beyond that. And then on the on the bulbs and the sheath, and I'm applying the The burnt sienna add a little bit ink, which make it dark brown. And I'm pulling.
So each layer, you do a little bit more than the first layer. When you say a little bit more, what do you mean? And you um you make a little bit longer than the the first layer. So, so the color is extending down into the white space more. Yes. And you're pulling it. Yes. Deeper. So now my first demo is pretty a little bit dry. So where the center of the flower, I had uh, burnt sienna. Now I'm going to add a little bit vermilion in the middle. So then you have like more a dimension. And um, I also will uh, demo the dark leaf too here. So like my, my ink was stop here and then I want to show you what I mean by it. So now my, it's going to be beyond where I stop the ink. And then I clean. So in this subject, we make it pretty simple. Then um, after the indigo is dry, then we apply the green on the dark leaves. The flower and um, the center of flower is done. And then we apply the this particular ochre, which I'm using indigo and um, yellow is a green, and I add a little bit of vermilion and a little bit ver ver burnt sienna to achieve this ochre, which I show it to you what color it looks like. So I hope this demo will um, kind of um, show it to you, the essence of fine line. Like I said, it can be uh, much more uh, complicated. It has, you add more, the more layer you add, the more dimension you will have. But this particular lesson, our purpose to show you the difference between fine line and xie yi, what do we mean by all the terminology like wash and line work and uh, that's it. So the idea is you start with your line work, okay? Mm -hmm. And if somebody had our lesson, they could just trace the line work from the lesson or you can draw it freehand if you're feeling more advanced and more comfortable or want to make your own little changes or tweaks to the composition. But you just do the line work with medium ink and you are... Um, uh, also, looking for variations in the lines. You don't want them to be uh, just straight and flat. Uh, they want to be, um, you know, some places thicker, some places thinner. Uh, and you are using a red feather brush to do the line work. Then the next stage is you do the initial fill. Um, can you show me that stage? Yes. The initial fill. Is here. Is this no? This is the second. This is the. This is this is this is the second stage of filling. We don't yeah, have an initial stage. 
the initials. This is the the set, the first stage of coloring. The first stage of coloring. Yeah, so, the only difference is this one. I did a demo on the. Oh indigo. yeah, you added a second stage with the indigo. Yeah, okay. but but the, everything else is all, only first. And the technique there is just leaving a, a hairline between the line work and the fill color in certain areas, and then applying the color downward, stopping early, and then using a clean brush to fade the edge of the line work into the white space. So you can see here the ink, uh, that stage finishes into white, but it fades nice and slow. Um, and then after that, you're just applying uh, layers and layers. You're waiting for that fade work to dry or that color work to dry and you're adding additional layers of color work uh, as you see fit or as the complexity of the painting demands. This is the second layer. So that's the second layer where, we, where you added additional colors and then when you add a, a, a second layer of color you're finishing that layer of color slightly deeper into the white space than the previous layer. And then again, fading the edge into the white. And you just keep going and doing that until it's done or until the lesson sort of dictates that you're finished. Yeah, and so the more layer you put it on, um, the more depth of your painting will look. Um, and then the essence is that each layer should wait until the last layer dried. Okay, good. Can we see the final composition? Yes. You know, without everything else in the background. And this is being done on fully sized paper. Yes, in our catalog, you can find on the student gray, which is glass, on the uh, artist gray is shimmer. And I would highly recommend to get a, a better paper called Shimmering Shun, and because it takes so much effort so um yeah you don't use a lot of paper so no. the paper that you should have should be it's nice if it's the best quality because it consumes much more time than it does paper yes so um so the the we have two different um grades of uh of fully sized paper that we sell one is the student grade which is called glass paper and then the other type is the shimmer schwinn which is uh, the artist grade quality of paper. And the way that you can tell that it's sized paper is you can do a stroke on it and then you can flip it on the back and you can see that it's actually not going through. You can still see the image because the paper's so thin, but when you look really close, you can actually see that the color is not going through the way it would on raw paper where um, there would be a lot less of a difference between the back side and the front side. Sometimes it's even hard to tell. Um, because the paper just so the ink strokes soak through but you can see on this fully sized paper it's not going through that's how you know that they applied the sizing and it's a, uh, evenly and thoroughly and it's a quality sized paper so you can see here this is the front and this is the back So once again, we hope you enjoyed this Narcissus lesson. Uh, this is a great flower for the new year because it, uh, it blooms early and um, it symbolizes wealth and prosperity. So it's exchanged a lot uh, amongst Chinese people uh, as gifts for the new year. And you can see that they, uh, during that time, a lot of them will have bulbs on their countertops that they received uh, from friends and they are letting them grow and letting them bloom and focusing on that to bring the new year in with health, wealth, prosperity, and peace.